we begin this morning, um, we, we are streaming live in the web, and we want to take the opportunity to thank those that are viewing us live at this time. Also, we, um, we're, our program goes on WHFL Channel 43.1 and also Time Water Cable 21 on Friday nights at 8 o'clock. So we want to extend a warm welcome to those that are viewing and listening at this time and invite you to come join us at the Highest Praise Tabernacle. If you're looking for a church that believes in the fundamentals of the Bible for everything you're going through to teach and grow, then Highest Praise is the place you need to go. Amen. Um, this message is about the home. Uh, I think that if we, if the nation and anyone listening today can understand something, until you get the home right, you can forget the rest of it. Um, and I, and so many times, this story that I share with you is, is most time it's a sad story. Everybody, um, don't never look at the flip side of the end of the story in this message. That uh, is, I'm going to be going in Luke 8:39, and then I'm going to be switching over to Mark. But this is a sad story of a demon-possessed man, and we always focus on how many demons he had and, and, and how messed up he was in the cemetery and stuff. Um, I'm going to address that, but I'm going I'm to go somewhere else. I'm going to go to the man's home today in this message. We want to go to his home life because uh, this is so important for us to understand why God wants the family unit to be the important part. Until we get the family unit where it needs to be, God can't move on the country, can't work on the nation, can't work on the church. So you see, I want us to look at what uh, Luke 8, 39 says as we begin this morning. Luke 8, 39 says, Return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Well, that's what Jesus told him to do. Now, if you want this to do a backup and catch up a little bit, this was a man who lived in a cemetery. Okay? Uh, a few verses in Mark, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. I want to share with you this because this is so important as we address the home situation. As you turn to Mark chapter 5, beginning of verse 1 through 5, this is a man who lived in a cemetery, a man who was self-destructive. This was a man who was uncontrollable. So I want you to look at what Mark 5, 1 says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. That's all we're going to say about that, because you know the story about how all this took place. But this was a man that was out of control. He was self-destructive, and he had left his home. The story is how Jesus demonstrates his power over Satan, the enemy of the day. First, this man was set free, we know from his tormentors. And not only that, the Bible says, and he was calm, he was clothed, and he was in his right mind. He was calm, he was clothed, and he was in his right mind. See, when Jesus does something, he just don't do a little bit. He did it all. He cleaned him up, fixed him up, and had him in his right mind. And, and last of all, the Lord sent him home to show what had happened to him. I want you to focus on, we never look at this part of, the, of this uh, message. He sent the man home. So why did Jesus send this delivered man home? Because first of all, we got to understand this as a, as, a, as a nation, as families. Home is the first frontier of Christian faith. People, let me tell you something. I have had so many people over the years tell me what God's called them to do, but they can't even get their house in order. Okay? Listen, God expects us to do the home stuff first. Home is where we're supposed to start our Christian faith. And just to, <coughs> excuse me, 
just to give you a couple examples of the home, I'd like for you to turn to Genesis 6, 8. In Genesis 6, 8, let's look at Noah. One, his family to the Lord. Well, you know, no, Lord was going to destroy the world, right? With the flood. But in Genesis 6, 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Somebody needs to get this. See, the only reason why Noah was saved because he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Because Noah loved God. And so, see, what did he do? His family followed Noah. See, what we got to understand something, listen. Please don't take this wrong, and please don't take it out of contents. But see, God called Noah because Noah was the only one out of all these people that were on this world that even attempted to follow God. And he said, okay, Noah, get your family in with you. See, they didn't argue with Noah. They didn't say, hey, look, we're out here with our thousands of friends that, saw, that we're doing the, the, the Solomon and Gomorrah thing. No, because the family, the leader of the family had his act together. The family followed him. See, the problem of it is, is the family unit is basically being destroyed. See, if we can't get this concept together... We're not going to ever get anything changed. You can't change the government. You can't change religion, Christianity. You can't change the school system until we start getting the family unit back where it needs to be. You know, I love what Joshua said in Joshua twenty four fifteen. As he was talking, I want you to notice what Joshua said in twenty four fifteen. Listen to this scripture. And if you seem evil... Unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, I got a plaque on my back porch that is screened in porch. I got a plaque that says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, Joshua wanting to serve the Lord. But he says, my house, his family. See, Scripture is all about the family unit, which is totally, totally just missed the mark this day and time. Let's look at another just example. I want to drive the family unit home, what the Bible says. How about what Cornelius, when he gathered his family to hear Peter. See, they heard that Peter was coming to town. Hey, we got this revival coming to town. Guess what he did? See, and this is something, <coughs> excuse me, that's so important. In Acts 10, 24, he said, And the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and he had called together his kinsmen and their friend. See, see, he was all about the whole family. Let's get the family to church. Hey, look, we got somebody coming. Let's, let's do it, the family. See, I remember... The families used to come to church. Nowadays, it's, um, it's, it's not a family thing no more because Satan is destroying the family unit. And, and, and it's all because of, of, of the leadership missing in the family. See, the family or, is ordained of God. And, I, and I'll just say this and leave it. The family is ordained of God. A, a father, a mother, and children. Okay? That's the family unit. So what we need to realize is that we need to get back to this thing because this delivered man was sent back to his home. How about the Philippian jailer? Let's just think of what happened to him and his family. In Acts 16.34, guess what? In Acts 16.34, it says, And when he had brought them into his house, what's his house? Where his family lived, he set meat before them and rejoiced, Believing in God with all his house. See, whenever the leadership takes position, things happen in a house, church. All too many times, and let's get real, let's be straightforward. All too many times, uh, the, the moms is left doing all the work. Okay? I, I know the way I, I was raised. Mom would have to drag you somewhere if you wanted to go. I'm going to be honest, guys. And, 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 and not only that, it's, it's, it's the process of what they're going through because 
is, here's what we say. Well, daddy didn't have to do it. My dad don't have to do it. Why have I got to go? Let me tell you what. I, w- I was raised in no old school. If my daddy would have said do it, there wouldn't have been no arguing. Okay, you got me? Because he'd have slapped you, slam out the front door, out the back door. There would have been no issues going on whatsoever. And if he said, get up, let's go, we go to church. Yes, sir. Popped up and went. But see, whenever your spiritual leadership is falling down in your family, then that's when you, the decay starts. I thank God for parents that are, that, and that are stepping in as parents, the grandparents and all those that are stepping up to the plate. But we got to realize the reason this nation is going through what it's going through is because of the destruction of the family. See, see, the point is that our family should be the first to know our faith is real. Why did Jesus send this demon-possessed mess back, man back home? Well, he was a mess, too. Back home was because he needed to go home to show what Jesus had done. See, a lot of people don't get this. At, at home, he had to go back home first to get his house in order before he could go do anything else for the Lord. See, we can't. Do what God wants us to do until our home believes we're real. Because, see, a lot of times we get up and and, and do all this sanctimonious and praise glory to God and go home, it's gone. See, let me tell you something, folks. It is a problem whenever we act like a Christian family around the church. And when we go home... It's not real. See, if we were to be honest, it is the most difficult thing in the world to be Christ-like at home. It is. No, that's not true. Yes, it is. Because that's when we let our hair down, so to speak. That's when we say, oh, well, I'm just going to tell you just like it is. That's whenever we just kind of just let it all flow, right? Come on. That, 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 that's, that's, that's the truth because I've seen people come out of church and, and, and even in families and stuff and, and they, by the time they get home, it's over. See, that's what's missing. But see, can I tell you, Satan knows that if I can mess up the Christian at home, see, then their testimony elsewhere is going to be nothing. See, at home, our witness stands or falls. Some parents, children get this. If, if you're not effective as a Christian at home, you can't go nowhere else and do it because you don't have the support. Look, if you're going to cuss somebody out at home, just don't stop just because you saw, went to church. If we want our country straightened out, let's start straightening out our family. Let's, let's start putting things where it needs to be. Mom and dad take responsibility of what God's called us to do. This man was sent home. He he said, I'll go with you, Jesus. He probably would have got better response. But this man, let's just just paraphrase. He was a drunk. He he spent his life so drunk, stayed out at the bars all the time. Cemetery pictures the world. He had hung out in the world so much he forgot how to go home. So what did it do? Jesus showed up, says, okay, before I can use you, you're not going with me nowhere. Go back home and make it right at home. And, and, and that's what portrays this world. See, before we, God can use, yeah, God calls people in the ministry, but before I can be effective, I had to go back home. I had to let my wife know. I, had, I couldn't just say what I was going to be doing. I, I had to go to my family, my mom and dad and all them. I say, I had to go back home first because the God says before I can send you out, you've got to get your home back in order. Amen. I want to ask you a question. I just want you to think on this throughout this message. How strong is our testimony at home? And I know you here and, and listening, you probably think, oh, wow. My spouse has seen the worst of me, the best of me. My spouse has, has seen things. But see, you've got to realize something, church. Our testimony at home should be something that we shouldn't be ashamed of. See, and, and, and let's get real. It's a work in progress. 
Okay? Because if any of you say you're perfect at home, we're going to have altar call. And you need to be the first one up here. Because home is a battleground. Home is where the testimony, home is where Jesus is supposed to come out. And, 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 and that's what a home is supposed to be. You show me a broken home, I'll show you a broken spiritual leadership. So why Jesus sent this delivered man home? Because not only did he want him to, to um, it was this first place it needed to go. Secondly, because home is the place to glory in the good things of God. Let me say that to you again. Home is the place to glory in the good things of God. You know, as we read earlier in Luke 8, 39, he says, Show what great things the Lord hath done to thee. Show what great things the Lord hath done to you. Look, let me tell you something. Going home, I didn't care whether my whole family was lost. I just went home. I, I had something inside of me. You remember when you got saved, you couldn't wait to get home and just tell what happened to you? Y'all remember that? Got baptized, weren't ashamed. Lord, no shame in that game. was just excited. Went home, says, whoa, I just can't wait to tell somebody what I've done. Praise glory to God. See, we need to understand that home is a place to glory in God. And listen, do you, do you, do you major in, in, in blessings at home? Are, are you the one of these people um, are, that are, are always praising the Lord at home? Do, think about this question. Do you major on your blessings at home? Do you, do you really focus on Telling people the good things, no matter what they're going through. Uh, do, do loved ones see you as a genuine Christian? Mm. Mm. I never, you, you know, remember the old school. I tell you what's the truth. It was tough to tell. You could tell when everybody was going to church. They put on their suit. <laughs> I'm serious. I knew we were going somewhere and had the suit on. That meant it was church. It wasn't because of what was in the suit. It was because the suit was put on. See, that's the way the world sees us. Oh, it's Sunday. They're going to church. See, we got to understand something. That's the problem right now because people don't see us as genuine Christians. So let me ask you this question. Are you known at home for faith or for fault finding? Oh, he's going to beat us all up today. You know, I, I, you know I, I, I'm, I'm not against denominations because I was taught one. I went to Bible college in one. But the thing about it, of it is, is, is I, I learned one thing. When, it, um, when I see Christians totally finding fault all the time, I don't want to go to their church. No amen there, right? Well, you need to ask yourselves, are we known at home, not, not in the field, are we known at home for walking in faith or, or are we walk, walk known for finding fault with everything? It's getting quieter. I feel, I feel the quietness. I'm going to have to get Lacia back up here to, 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 to get the spirit back up into place. Do you appear holy at church and hateful at home? You ain't married to the woman I'm married to. I'm going to tell you. Because as soon as I try to let that flesh pop out, y'all don't have a clue what that is, right? First thing she says, I cannot believe you just preached such a good message and, and, and that shuts me right down. Y'all think y'all got it tough. And, but it makes me realize she's right. Because, Wow. Am, am, am I putting a show on? Or am, am I for really, am I, am I really a holy person? See, we're all saints, whether you act like it or not. Because the Bible says we are. And see, if you appear holy at church, you need to be holy at home. Are you saintly at church and sour at home? Are you gracious at church or grouchy at home? I'm telling you, someone once told me, said, look, I've been nice as long as I can be. I'm just going to go home. Leave me alone. 
And see, we've got to understand something. That should be a place just like this man that had all these demons in him. God had set him free. Can you, t- can I, can you imagine, paraphrasing, this man had been on a drunk for how many ever years, doing drugs, messed up, and finally he gets saved and goes knocking on the door. Honey, I'm home. Can you imagine the response that probably family probably had? Shoot him. He ain't paid child support in 30 years, and he ain't come knocking on my door. Kill him. But he had to go back and make right the mess that he made. But when he knocked on the door, see, let me tell you something, church. If you're afraid, this is just what Lord, if you're afraid to open a door back up that you had messed up, but when you were lost, listen, you haven't got enough of Jesus. If you got enough of Jesus in you, you can go back through all these broken down doors and make right. I went back. I was doing things that I never thought I would do. I was going to people apologizing for beating them up. I was apologizing to people as a kid I knocked around. I, I, was, I was apologizing for, and I had a lot to apologize for. Now I'm going to go on and tell you, we're not, I'm not, that book ain't going to come out. But I was apologizing for things that the Lord would bring it to my remembrance. Because I had to go back home. And when I went back home, I realized I had to make right the things that I could. Boy, that was a list that I don't ever have to go through again. But when I did, I realized that whenever I made things right, whenever I allowed God to use me, all, all of a sudden I felt rebuilding. I felt... God, see, let me tell you something. Whenever you're going in the will of God, no matter what you've done, God will make it right. You know, I, I, I probably, no, my wife wasn't my biggest issue about Jesus because she was one of them Church of God women. She was going, woo, praise the glory to God. She was excited. My biggest fear was going to my family that don't talk about Jesus, don't talk about love, that all my family's out there, woo. That, I was more terrified of that. So I went in and sat down to my mom and dad, and I said, I just want to, first of all, tell you I'm sorry. How do you tell them you're sorry for 20 years of being mean? I wasn't mean to my family. I was just mean to Greg. I said, I want to tell you I'm sorry for the way I've acted. And it was tough. I mean, I had a goozle in my throat about that big, trying to, trying to tell them. And I said, I, I want to apologize because... I, I, I give y'all a hard time and I didn't do the way I should. Do you know what they said? This is so ironic. Oh, you weren't that bad. I had to look at him and say, yeah, I was. She said, no, you weren't. She said, um, some are worse. She said, and, and they tried to let me off the hook. My point in saying this is, you'd be surprised how many people are willing to let you off the hook for things in your life if you just go to them and just let them know, you know. Because the biggest, the biggest thing, hardest thing for me to do was to learn to say I'm sorry. <laughs> Boy, when you, well, look, so can you imagine this demon-possessed guy that had legions of demons in him? I mean, he had every demon known to mankind in him. And he had to go home and say I'm sorry. He had a lot to apologize. But let me tell you something, when God's in it, God will bless it, church. See, we need to understand something about the way we act and and how we live our lives. See, is our place at home of of praise or of pouting? When we go home, do we praise the Lord? See, sometimes my wife don't know this. Sometimes whenever I'm there by myself studying, I'll turn on the television. I'll go up to some preaching. I'll go to something that will encourage me. And and one of the greatest things I like to do, I've always uh, loved Jason Craft. I got a vi- several of his videos, man, and, I, and I'll get right out there and shout with him. And see, I never thought it'd be the day that I'd be in my house, and I didn't care what my wife would think. I get, I get to praise the Lord right in my recliner. How many of you have ever done that? See, what would be blessing is for your grandchildren to come in, and, and you're not trying to do this. Let's get real. Hurry up, change the commercial. Change the channel. Here comes the grandchildren. Or better yet, they come in the door and you praising the Lord. 
See, we've got to understand something. If we want God to bless this nation, we've got to learn to be a blessing at home. We've got to restore and rebuild. The man went home to, to do what God had, had called him to. See, the last thing we need to understand in this, see, um, at home, we need to understand that we need to operate in the goodness of God at home because he told them, he said, show what great things the Lord had done today. What do you mean show? He means tell them and show them, look, I'm a changed man. Look, I'm not cut up. Look, I, I, I'm clean. I'm in my right mind. He, he, he had a lot to talk about. See, our problem of it is, is we as Christians don't have a lot to talk about. Anybody in here blessed? Good gracious, I do reckon. We ought to go home and say, look, I'm blessed. Let me tell you what happened in church. No, the preacher didn't preach too long. No, we got blessed. No, Lacey didn't get Holy Spirit in her. No, we, we were blessed by it. See, when we go home, we're supposed to take something with us. We're supposed to go home and, and, and be praising the Lord. My wife and I had to learn this the hard way. Being in the ministry is tough. Because, see, I have to go home and she's my sounding board. And my wife has learned. We just, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. If you can't find nothing good in what happened to you today, don't say nothing at all. But I don't know about you, but we all should have something good to say. And last but not least, I want to move to this quick. Home is the outpost for outreach with the gospel of Christ. Home is the, listen, home is like the lighthouse. He told the man, he says, show what great things the Lord had done. He said, go to the house. Now, when he got his house in order, when he got, showed them what great things he had done, the Lord said, now, go out. He said, go out. He, in fact, he told him, he said, and he said, and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done to him. He went home. He didn't kill. Listen, he didn't kill what people said. There's that drunk. There's that old drug addict. There's that old heathen. He didn't care. He just went showing them what the Lord had done. And, and, and the Bible says that this man started at home and he spread the word. Then he shared his testimony throughout the city. Now, there's a lot of this that y'all don't understand that, that's so important. You see, Christian homes should be a lighthouse, not a firehouse. <laughs> Christian home should be somewhere that is a light. What's a lighthouse do? It directs the ships from wrecking. Is that what a lighthouse does? A lighthouse is whenever ships is coming in and the fog and the weather is bad, this lighthouse has this beacon of light that directs them to keep them from wrecking. The home is a place that people are supposed to see that's a Christian home. Not just because you got, I love Jesus on my doorknob. It's supposed to be a place that people know that genuine Christians live there. You want to... Rebuild the church, rebuild Christianity. Let's start rebuilding your home so that God will use it as a beacon of light in this world. Notice, I want you to know something. He said he shared his testimony throughout the cities. And, 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 and we talked about how that, that a Christian home should be that lighthouse. See, where communities should know where Christians live. See, there's some of us like me that live in a community. You know, the people know who you are. Well, people will go down the road and says, we're looking for that preacher. Is it a preacher in here? Of course, they know I am. Why? I don't, put a, I don't put something in my yard. You can ask my neighbor, I don't put nothing in my yard. I don't have crosses in my front yard. People should know you by your walk. If you're going to come out here and act holier than thou, you better go home and act holier than thou. If you're going to treat your wife like you love her here, you better treat your wife like you love her at home. If you're going to tr tell your children the right direction and show them here, you better go home and show them the exact same way you did it here. If you're going to have love and compassion to people here, you need to have love and compassion to people at home. See, because home is a lighthouse where neighbors should be evangelized. See, one of my biggest problems is evangelizing to the neighbor. I have to be honest with you. Some of my neighbors is here, and I've known them for four years, and it's my fault. Oh, wow, the preacher did. Because it's hard for us to evangelize to people around us. 
It is. We kind of go our own way. and I mean, not that I, I was never mean to them. Don't get me wrong. Praise God, God. I was not mean to them. But we forget that we're supposed to be evangelizing. He just told this man, said, go home. Then, then tell everybody. Now, I know you're saying, man, is he beating this in the ground or what? But you don't miss the rest of the story that he, he said. There's a verse of Scripture that nobody ever looks at. Do you know why this man was sent home? Do you know why this man was supposed to get his home in order? Do you know why this man was supposed to go out and tell everybody in his neighborhood about it? In verse 40 of Luke 8, everybody look at this Scripture. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. See, y'all didn't, nobody ever hears the rest of the story, as Paul would say. This man had, God had a plan for him. See, you go home, you tell the people what I've done, your, your wife and your family what I've done, you tell the community what I've done, because see, I'm coming back. And look, you know, can you imagine how pleased God was, Jesus was, and he showed up that all of them was waiting for him? See, he set it up. He set up a revival. See, let me tell you something, church. Jesus is coming back. And if we don't, as a family unit, get up and start telling people and getting our families right and those in our community, guess what? They're not going to be ready and waiting. When Jesus returned, the multitudes awaited him. Because this man was obedient. Think about it. This one man, as they talked about in Sunday school, one man that the whole world didn't want to have nothing to do with, one man that was so messed up, he had legions, and I think that was 6,000 demons. I've seen some people, I think they got that many. This one man that the whole world had turned their back on, never amount to nothing, couldn't bind him with feathers and chains. Nothing they did could work because he, he was so messed up. Jesus showed the power of who he is because he took the worst of the worst of the worst. He said, cleaned him up, made him whole, set him in his right mind, said, okay, I'm not finished with him yet. I'm going to send him home. He's going to get his house right, and I'm going to use him to do a revival in a place that needs it. See, everybody was changed by one man. See, this is so important. Even in Sunday school, they were talking about one person, Hezekiah, one person. God uses one person to change a nation. Church, look around at us right now. God used one person to change a nation. What could he do with us? What could he do to our young people? One. God don't need a lot. Just give me one broken down, 6,000 demon possessed person. So that qualifies all of us. Every one of you in this room are qualified to change your home, to change your community, to change the world. Just one. So we wonder why Satan is running rampant. It's because we're not starting at home. God had to get him right at home before he could use him. You give me a church that the family is working together with God, I'll give you a church that God would build. You give me broken families, I'll give you a broken church. See, church, this whole message is about so important. Jesus says, I'm going to return. And then you're going to have to show me what you did. Are you with me? See, Jesus is going to come back whether you believe it or not. And it's up to us to make our homes a, 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 a mission statement. It's up to us to make our home what, something that God can use. And I'm going to step on my own toes if I don't step on nobody else's. That means that our home does not, cannot be a Christian place when we got company. It means that we got to be careful what we allow in that home. Well, Pastor, now you're really getting personal. Because, uh, you know, I, when I'm by myself, I might watch this and watch this. You're never by yourself. you got three other, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're watching you two right now, whether you're asleep or awake. It don't matter. God won't use you 
until he sees that you've got your home where it needs to be. So does anybody just want God to use them? Well, guess what? Get your home right. And, if, and, you know, listen, you know why God used me in the ministry? Because I went straight to the home. After I told my wife what God wanted me to do, after she stopped having a nervous breakdown, <laughs> then I moved to my family. I had drinking buddies. Let's get, guys, I had drinking buddies I have drank with my entire life. I was raised in a drinking family. In fact, my best friends, all we did was drink. I'm, I, I, I'm not proud of it. But, you know, I went to them and told them, Hey, pull up a drink. Have a drink and pull up. I said, No, I got saved. Y'all have seen all of them. What's that? You got a disease where you can't drink no more? I said, No, I got Jesus. And uh, I come to tell you that um, I've got my house in order. Now, while the praise team is getting this ready, let me tell you this, church. That same family that kind of laughed at like I had gotten better than they were since I let my family know where I stood. A few years later, their mother was laying at, Gold's, at um, Greenville at that hospital dying of cancer because they spent all the money on partying and didn't even consider helping the mom which had cancer here she is laying in Greenville guess who they call she's dying only got a few hours left call me I drove to Greenville and I went in her room and the family was still out there on a limb but that one person that God reached I went in the room and I asked my aunt Hetty May I said, Hedy May, do you know Jesus? Have you ever been saved? Do you know what she told me in front of all her children? She says, no. She spoke to me in her dying words, no. I said, Hedy May, do you want to go to heaven? She says, yes. So right there on that bed, I led her to Jesus. She got saved right there on the spot. And then the family, I looked at them. I said, your mama is going to heaven. Don't you want to see her again? Do you know what happened? Because of the dad, which was the uncle, sitting there. He didn't care much for me doing what I did, but I did it anyway because of the spiritual leadership that was broken in the family. You know what the family said? We're not ready. Church, listen. If we don't get the family right, we're going to have a lot of family members that's going to die without Jesus. And we need to wake up and realize that these seats ain't empty because everybody's gone on vacation. The seats are empty because Satan is doing a better job at destroying the family than God is in restoring the family. So I want to open this altar up as they pray. I want, you, I want to ask you a question as I open this altar. How many of us wants our family saved? God don't need but one person in a multitude of families to make a difference. Are you that one person this morning? This altar is open, church.